this is uh, this is a uh, um, Japanese program, uh, Genron Arena, uh, which is uh, we regularly broadcast in Japanese. But uh, today, uh, well, we introduced you uh, our special guest, uh, Molly Robertson. Hello, everybody. I'm Molly Robertson. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about uh, Fukushima. Yes. Uh, and it's very uh, famous uh, places in the world, but a very uh, mistaken uh, place. So we are going to uh, talk about Fukushima, uh, uh, its uh, real situation of Fukushima. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and first of all, we are going to introduce uh, a funny uh, picture, uh, please. Okay. Oh, what's so, this? Um, this is a recent article which was uh, published on a UK paper, The Independent. And the, the title reads, Would you eat Fukushima soup? Freeze visitors queue up to risk delicious yet possibly toxic radish broth. Now to explain this really quickly, uh, well there's under the, cap uh, under the photo there's a caption that says Londoners show solidarity with the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl by putting themselves at risk from conceptually radioactive broth. Now, and let's read in a little bit into the article. Okay. I'm just going to read the first few paragraphs. Visitors to this year's Freeze Art Fair, which is a large-scale art fair taking place in London, have been won over by soup so delicious, nobody seems to care that it is made from potentially radioactive radishes. Huge queues of willing guinea pigs, now this is getting sensational, willing guinea pigs have been lining up to taste the soup, which is doled out for free for the past three days at the London Art Fair. The installation, Does This Soup Taste Ambivalent, is by a Japanese conceptual artist, United Brothers, who hail from the tsunami and earthquake hit prefecture Fukushima. They have flown their mother over to make soup from the daikon radish, which grows near the nuclear plant damaged in the natural disaster and which has been seeping radioactive waste. Despite assurances that the vegetables are safe to eat, the artists are offering the public the conceptual possibility that they are toxic. The duo believe that food represents hospitality, sharing, and humanity. So, by partaking in the soup, uh, the public can show solidarity with the victims of the Fukushima disaster. They want to see if individuals outside Japan would risk their well-being for such a gesture. And there's a photo underneath of the artist's mother uh, cooking the miso soup, based soup with daikon radishes and giving it out. Now, um, in explaining this article and what, what's going on here, um, from the from the title and the caption alone, there's there's a series of exaggerations which are taking place, and I'll, I'll just have to point them out. I don't want to be boring, but I'm going to point them out <laughs> one by one. Okay, uh, possibly toxic radish broth. Not true. I'm sorry, it's not true. It's just not true because uh, Japanese radishes, which by the way don't look like this photo, and I think even <laughs> the artist later admitted that he colorized this uh, this soup in, uh, to make it conceptually interesting. Uh, if you have daikon radish soup in Fukushima, in Tokyo, anywhere, it does not look. Uh, it is not of this coloration. Anyway, uh, the. Vegetables shipped out of Fukushima right now undergo very strict uh, uh, radiation checks, so it's impossible for it to be toxic. So that's one thing. Uh, next, Londoners show solidarity with the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl uh, by putting themselves at risk uh, from radioactive, and it's not even conceptually radioactive. And I can go on forever, but um, in, in any case, maybe you can uh, understand that this article has been written in a kind of a, a spirit of wit. It's, it's kind of um, making fun, poking fun at Fukushima, and at the same time, you know, it's kind of um, titillating about what is art. And that in itself is uh, business as usual for the independent, I, I believe. However, what I'm, what I'm seeing here is a trend of how uh, Fukushima and maybe Japan at large tends to get mis misrepresented or misinterpreted, skewed, and also um, spread about in the, in the media. So I want to show you another exhibit, which is uh, Russian media, Russia Today, which reported on the same art uh, performance, but with the title Nuclear Soup. Okay, this is, this is really getting overboard in, uh, Exaggeration. Nuclear soup. 
Japanese duo to serve Fukushima broth at London Art Fair. So let's go down a little bit. And this is not a uh, soup with radish in it. I don't know what it is. It looks like Vietnam pho. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's called pho bo because of the, you know, the oxtail and then the beef, uh, beef. It looks like Vietnamese beef noodles to me, but maybe, maybe it's supposed to be miso soup for somebody else. Okay, would you eat radioactive soup? This is how the article, the Russian art, uh, media article begins. And, you know, unfortunately, it's been uh, shared at 1.4k <laughs> times, and I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. That's the somewhat unappetizing question facing visitors to next month's Freeze Art Fair in London. The fair, which is known for its eccentric conceptual art, will see a new project in which brothers Tomo and, uh, and A. Arakawa, who go under the performance name United Brothers, make a soup using vegetables grown in Fukushima, the Japanese prefecture hit in March 2011 by one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. Uh, Maybe not one of the worst nuclear disasters in history, but I'll let that go. The region faced a devastating earthquake, yes it did, and tsunami which caused the reactors to melt and nuclear material to seep out, yes, a little bit. As a result, thousands of residents of the area suffered. Now here, here comes the exaggeration and the spin. As a result, thousands of residents of the area, Fukushima, suffered permanent health damage, particularly after consuming certain foods and water. Now, okay, this is not verified. You know, it's, it's, it, we're, we're getting into conspiracy theories here. As a result, um, uh, okay, so we, we, we got there. And next, the project called uh, Does This Soup Taste Ambivalent was created in solidarity with victims affected by the nuclear disaster, the effects of which are still being felt today. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if you go into the, the artist's profile, it, it's very questionable if, if this artwork was a humanitarian action as Russia today is feeling. And just, just to boot, just one final touch, is the photograph. It says, these red radish-like things, it says, image of daikon radish by <laughs> Reuters. You know, <laughs> no, it's not. Daikon is white and long. I'm sorry, this is like more like a Western radish in my eyes. Okay. And the soup's main ingredient is the daikon radish, a staple food in Fukushima. Well, uh, Fukush daikon is not, it's not a staple food in Fukushima. It's, it's often an assortment. You know, I can go into details here, but I won't. So anyway, I just want to sort of share with my audience that this, you know, this is taking a, a curious twist. So we first look at the independent article, a little bit more serious side. And the photo is kind of scary, uh, this word toxic, possibly toxic. So it's kind of tongue in cheek. You know, it's, it's about art. It's, it's, it's under the art uh, subdirectory. So it's, it's not like, you know, serious news news. But then we look at the Russia Today. Uh, <coughs> And all of a sudden, uh, it, it, it turns more serious. You know, it's like under the UK directory. So, uh, you know, I'm seeing what I might even call classical Soviet Pravda, Pravda style uh, reporting. You know, it's, I, I see a lot of sort of propagandistic twists and, and little nuts and bolts, little spices being thrown in to, you know, add seasoning, add flavor to this faux bow. Anyway, uh, so this is where we start. You know, this is sort of a, uh, but this is really just a typical example uh, because this kind of misrepresentation of Japan and Fukushima has been going on for over three years by now. This photograph is not uh, the nuclear soup itself. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably just a stock photos. It yeah. says Reuters and whoever comes yeah. is who took the photo. I yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, so again, you know, I mean, this is sort of propaganda where you show an unrelated photograph, mm. but but with a caption <laughs> and an article which is gripping because of toxicity. The word Chernobyl jumps out, yeah. and but this has become a kind of game which. Uh, a lot of the world media, at least the English uh, media, English language media, which yeah. I've been watching. So when they throw in these words, it grabs the audience attention. But however, unfortunately, there's a lot of misleading that yeah. goes on. Yes. And uh, in Japan, uh, there were such uh, kind of uh, rumors uh, three years ago. Yes. Uh, but. Uh, recently, uh, very few people are talking about uh, Hanaji uh, uh, blood, nose bleeding. Uh, nose, nose blood or such kind of uh, uh, funny things. So, uh, uh, thyroid cancer in children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, serious media mm. uh, don't uh, write such a uh, kind of uh, funny things. Right. But 
uh, I was, I'm surprised that uh, English media uh, is in such a kind of uh, Japan and, uh, three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, funny things about right. radioactivity. And, well, they are exaggerated. Yes, yes. Uh, but um, the English people, uh, hmm. and, and, uh, for example, an American embassy uh, said uh, American people uh, should be uh, remote uh, from Fukushima mm -hmm. and, uh, and five, uh, 50 miles uh, away from Fukushima. Mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the NRC uh, chairman of Yatsuko uh, mm -hmm. said uh, Fukushima uh, was very different and, di and uh, dangerous. Yes. Um, I think uh, the, the distance uh, from Fukushima uh, is uh, um, proportionally uh, mm -hmm. to the exaggeration. Oh, right. The farther the people get, the more scared yeah. they become. <laughs> That's possible. Yeah. Um, I was actually uh, in Tokyo on March 11th of 2011 yeah. during the earthquake. And in the following days after the earthquake, you know, uh, there was a news blackout because uh, we couldn't have establish communications with Fukushima because of the disaster, and not because the government was hiding information. The government was a little hesitant to not release information that would lead to panic, yeah. but they didn't hide or blackout information. Let's get that straight. And then when the news started trickling in, uh, many embassies from Western countries, including my country, the United States, uh, sent out email to uh, foreigners living in Japan, and I was asked by email repeatedly to consider moving away from Tokyo, maybe to Osaka or to southern Japan. And um, I didn't really believe it myself because I was also getting information from Japanese. Um, and then finally, after um, the U.S. Embassy uh, started talking about free uh, airlifts out of uh, a military base like Atsugi, like uh, you know, U.S. U.S. military bases in Japan. Like like they said, if you're a U.S. citizen and you have a passport, we'll give you a free ride to a uh, uh, a neighboring country, like maybe Korea, maybe Taiwan. But they wouldn't tell you specifically somewhere outside Japan. You know, and it got ominous. The tone started getting a little bit overly serious. So what I did was I just took the bullet train and went to Nagoya, because it was in between Osaka and Tokyo. So I, I took this halfway point. And I decided if things do get dangerous, I'm going to evacuate. But they didn't. So I came back after one week, and that was the end of the story. The U.S. Embassy uh, dropped all the warnings, and you know it's been business as usual since. So uh, actually, for people who live in Japan, in Tokyo, um, the, the early warnings were present, but now we don't have any more scares about uh, radiation, especially in Tokyo or the Kanto area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. あ、ちょっとえ、日本のお、お熱のため、ちょっとだけ解説をお伝えします。最初のあの、お菓子のスープのお、ちょっと30分ぐらいを出してもらえますか。え、これこれはちょっと説明がかなり必要だと思うんだ
ものだったんですよ、うん、で結局結果としてはですね誰も怖がらなくてみんなただのスープが飲めるっていうとすごい長い列ができたと<笑>えところがあのなんていうのかな,あの、えーなまあ、日本式に言いますとあの振り上げた拳を下ろさなきゃいけなくなった、えー、英国メディアはですね例えば UK ガーディアンの,あのアートあアートで有名なあの名物記者がいるんですけれどもその方は結局私はこれをあの決意してねあの食べたんだけど今のところまだ死んでませんとかいうふうに記事を結んだり、まあ、ちょっと冗談めかした感じであのちょっと面白おかしくあのというのになったわけですねだからそのイギリスの中で完結している分にはあの、まあ、比較的ダメージコントロールというんでしょうか日本のイメージはこれによってはダウンしてないんですけど福島も含めて問題はロシアツデーなわけですよねでロシアツデーというのは要は自国以外で特に欧米やまあその仲間での日本をこき下ろせる時には面白い白おかしく徹底して記事を書く傾向があるんです。うんそれでまあ要は世界には陰謀論が好きな欧米反欧米というかまあなんていうかアンチ巨人みたいな感じでアンチ欧米の人たちがいて英語圏でもでこういうのを見るとやっぱりやったーっていうふうにまた日本が日本やアメリカがなんか隠蔽しているざまみろみたいなねそういう領域を下げるタブロイドとしてあのそもそもロシアツデーというのは存在しているという大前提がありましてあのだからロシアツデーを毎日見に行く人っていうのは言ってみれば面白い記事をあの掘り当ててこんな面白いのがあったっていうとそれを仲間にこうフェイスブックやツイッターであの回して楽しむというそういう媒体なんですねあのどっちかっていうとところが時々真面目なニュースもやるんですよでこのニュースが真面目ニュース的なレイアウトになっていてこの,あのフォーとしか思えない写真もですね<笑>ロイターってちゃんとついてるんですよねつまり報道っていうそのだからまあ手品なんですがそういうものを見るとおおロイターの写真じゃあ真面目なニュースなんだで下,下の方にですねあの福島ではあのー、みんながその毎日のように大根ラディッシュを食べているってこの写真が出るんですよでこれが大根ラディッシュロイターまたロイターって出てるんですけど大根じゃないと思うんですよね赤いラディッシュなわけですよね,<笑>えだ,だ,ねだからそのなんていうかもう本当にいい加減に。でであのもう一つロ、ロシアツデーの方はそのもっともらしく記事をする過程で、まあ、これがまさにソ連のプラウダなんじゃないかというぐらいプロパガンダのショーがうまくてですね、えー、と3年前、えー、あごめんなさい、ちょっと一段そこそこですね。あのあの大変甚大な、えー、大地震と津波があってその結果、えー、原子炉がメルトダウンをし、えー、放射性物質が、えー、漏れた、まあ、そこまでは、まあ、なんとなく当たってるんですけどその結果と続くんですね。何、う、千、ん、という地元の住人がえー、パーマネントっていうのはですね永遠にあの戻すことができない健康被害を、えー、受けて、えー、っとしかもその健康被害はことさら、えー、地元の食べ物や水を摂取した後ひどいものだったみたいになってるわけですよ、えー、そしてさらに従ってこのプロジェクトこのアートプロジェクトはそういう被害者たちとの連帯を意図して作られたみたいに人道ネタになってるんですね人道ニュースになってるんですよだから例えばそのかわいそうな何だろう例えばあのエボラでねあの家族が死んでしまった孤児たちを引き受けた人の記事だったら人道記事ですよねだからそれと似たようなトーンを帯びてくるわけですよね英語ででそれを全体像が分かっていて特に日本からこの記事を見ると本当にこれはいじってるっていうか遊んでるようにしか見えないんですけどここで問題にまあ英語でしていたのはあの英語でこれを読んだ人がファーストインプレッションとして受けてしまうと他にセカンドオピニオンがないということなんですねこうやって一人歩きしていくという。はい Is there any other example of such kind of a funny、uh, reporting?、Um, let's see.、Uh, well,、um, as far as Fukushima goes, the, there are occasionally exaggerated reports、yeah. about how,、um, how say,、uh, residents, some residents are allowed to move back、yeah. to the area and, and, that, and that activists and, say, left wing politicians think that it's dangerous.、Yeah. And、uh, a lot of times in the Western media, when that kind of news comes out, they tend to go based on English、uh, news sources available. Yeah. Let's, let's just do, let's do a news search with the keyword Fukushima. Okay, this is what, I, what I'm talking about. We get, first thing we get is Mainichi Daily News. Okay? And then often, oftentimes there's also、uh, Asahi Shimbun, Asahi News. And、uh, I'm not really taking issue with any of one particular article. But what Western journalists tend to get as source material is English news published from Japan. And、uh, because Mainichi and Asahi 
uh, which are sort of center left or hard <laughs> left in their editorial policies, uh, tend to publish a lot of English news. As a result, uh, the impression which is given to the Western media at large, so including people from, say, BBC or CNN who are searching for news items from Japan, the first sources they get uh, tend to be uh, from news uh, newspapers which do not portray nuclear power itself in a favorable light. So what we're getting as a result, if I, if I only read English and I can't understand Japanese, I end up getting an anti-nuclear mm. and left-biased editorial from the Mainichi and Asahi. And I have to state that I respect the Mainichi and Asahi newspapers, <laughs> and especially my mother, uh, my mother, Reiko Robertson, uh, she's, you know, older age and retired now, she was the first woman journalist for Mainichi Ooh. in 1960. <laughs> <laughs> that was, she was the first woman they ever hired. Yeah. So, so, you know, uh, Mainichi runs in my family. <laughs> so, so I don't really have a reason to be, you know, biased against Mainichi, but uh, throughout, uh, th through the decades, uh, the Japanese newspapers, as in with any, any kind of, I mean, if I talked about, say, Fox News and Huffington Post, you know, people in America would really understand that there is, there's, you know, a wide gradation from kind of right-wing to left-wing orientation. And if you read only Fox <clears throat> News, you will get a distorted picture of America. And if you only read Huffington Post, you know, it's going to, you're reading a news about a different country that then actually <laughs> exists. So, so that's the same thing applies to Japanese news. If you're only reading Asahi and Mainichi, um, you are an Asahi and Mainichi fan, and you're not really getting the, the true uh, larger picture of how Japan was. And unfortunately, here, we don't have center-right uh, news from Japan being actively broadcasted in English. Uh, don't you uh, really, uh, say, uh, for example, Yomiuri? Uh, the, but the thing is, okay, what I want to say is when we go back to the, 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 the latest, you know, English news searches, we oh. don't get too many hits from Yomiuri. That's the problem. Uh, Japan uh, Times uh, is uh, far left. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Japan, yeah. Yeah, Japan Times, right. So we end up getting either far left or center left news. Yeah. This is what's happening on the search engine level. So this is a more technical issue. And if, like you said, yeah. if people from the world, if journalists, Western journalists were to be able to subscribe to, say, the English Yomiuri News, uh, then, you know, they would get a more organic picture. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Yomiuri is, is right all the time, but to, you know, as a journalist, to get a more accurate picture, you have to get the sort of spread of opinions. Yeah. But on, on web searches, we end up getting either hard left or center left. So mm -hmm. everything gets colorized in that direction. I think one of the reasons is that uh, such kind of dangerous news is mm -hmm. popular. You're right, yes. It's more sensational. Yeah. And in Japan, we are uh, getting out of such kind of uh, panic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, English-speaking people are uh, still uh, in such kind of uh, the, a little panic. Uh, well, you see, uh, uh, a little bit, uh, yes, I think that not so much of a panic. They never yeah. really had a panic to begin with because they thought it was all local in Japan. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not like they're yeah. saying, oh, the, the radiation is coming to our country. <laughs> you know, it's not like that. But what I'm saying is that when the press picks up the news and they want to get, you know, uh, page views for their articles, when they want to get those hits, what they do is they start what I call massaging uh, the English wording. Like, for instance, uh, let's see. Okay, like this is the Global Post. Evacuation zone around crippled Fukushima plant narrowed further. Yeah. Okay. So when you say crippled Fukushima plant, that's a very strong, you know, yeah. it's a much stronger wording than say <laughs> disable, and it it talks about imminent danger. And when people think about a crippled reactor, uh, you know, people old enough to remember the yeah. Chernobyl disaster, that's the first thing they come <clears throat> in mind. So so. You know, instead of nuancing uh, the, the whole issue of, oh, Fukushima, yeah, it's, it's a little bit under control, it's more under control, it's more under control, instead of uh, reporting like that, that's kind of boring. It, it's more sensational and maybe uh, exciting to say yeah. that, oh, Japan has, you know, a, a, a disaster, it's worse than Chernobyl, it's going to melt down, maybe they have a nuclear explosion, you know, something like that. Yeah. And so the wording itself gets biased. And to add my interpretation to why this happens, mm. uh, one problem is that, Japan, in terms of news, tends to be boring. 
<laughs> you know, I'm, uh, so maybe that uh, maybe, very few news uh, is out of Japan. So it's a very rare, interesting news mm -hmm, from mm -hmm, Japan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so uh, when when people hear Japan, uh, if, if this was Kyoto or Kumamoto or Nagoya or something, if that kind of a, a name of a, of a location in Japan was in the news, most people would just breeze by and not read it because it's not it doesn't grab you. But when it says Fukushima. Yes, that, that, that does half the job, but then add crippled reactor to, yeah. you know, to Kukiza. That, that does the job. So this is more like a, a question of journalism uh, in, the, in, in the age of internet. Yeah. That's the kind of bias that enters. Um, but uh, three years ago, uh, we uh, Japanese uh, mm -hmm. had a similar uh, problem of irresponsible journalists right, uh, right. spreading uh, such kind of uh, rumors. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Japan, uh, there were uh, repercussions uh, from uh, the victims themselves yes. or the government uh, for the such irresponsible uh, reporting. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, in Western countries, uh, such kind of uh, re uh, response or re repercussion is not uh, so uh, strong. Well, uh, for for one, um, let's see, how should I put it? People who don't live in Japan, people who live in America or Europe, um, it's not in their daily interest to sift through Japanese news and to try to look for yeah. the accurate picture. I mean, for them, it's like, oh, Japan's had a big nuclear disaster. You know, <laughs> nobody can enter Fukushima for, for 10,000 years or 100,000 years, you know. And maybe some people will just tell their friends in a bar, yeah. oh, did you hear about Japan? You know, I would never go there, some, something like that. Yeah. So it's really, it's really the priority of the news yeah. is so much lower than something like Ebola. Okay, like if we look at Ebola right now, as of this date, uh, you know, we're, we're getting people, uh, Europeans, who've, 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 been, uh, who've caught the disease. And some people have survived, others have died. And there's, there's a real serious uh, fear of a local outbreak. And also within Africa and West Africa, you know, it's been sort of under control, but not really. And the countries which are suffering the most from the Ebola outbreak have uh, recently been in, in, embroiled in civil war. So uh, in countries like Liberia or Sierra Leone, uh, which have been torn apart by war, there's no infrastructure where the Ebola is hitting hardest. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so we're really looking not just at an outbreak, but a pandemic which could spread and say, what if, what if Ebola goes to India? You know, or China, it's not going to stop. So that's the kind of real fear which climbs up to the top of the news every day. Ebola vaccine. If you look at BBC right now, uh, Ebola is always um, all the small updates on Ebola are there. But Fukushima basically has, doesn't change. You know, it, there was there was a disaster three years ago. It seems to be largely under control, with some radiation in a very minor uh, level seeping out maybe yeah. into the water. <clears throat> and so, so it becomes kind of a a kind of more like a light-hearted topic. Which is meaning uh, the, the level is so lighthearted, the seriousness is so low that you can make jokes about it. But with Ebola, say if somebody with the Independent or the UK Guardian or the New York, New York Times or LA Times wrote an article making fun of Ebola, like, like a joke article, Oh, that would cause a lot of, that was kind of storm, right? Yeah. In fact, actually a few days ago, uh, a certain vendor of Halloween costumes uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> put on sale an yeah. e Ebola outfit, you yeah. know, sort of like a decontamination <clears throat> suit, and 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 then I think uh, some tabloid newspapers yeah. uh, took a shot at it, right? And what's strange is that when it became Japanese news, it became Japanese news today. Uh, there was only a photograph of the Halloween costume with a caption <laughs> that says. Uh, you know, even Halloween costumes are, are, are paying attention to Ebola. And, and there was no mention of the scorn and the problem that it caused in the West. So right now, we're really seeing on both sides of the language divide, yeah. news that in English is much more sensational, uh, loses all of that energy when it comes to Japan and becomes one photograph. And news from Japan gets sensationalized in the West. So we're really seeing like a disconnect here. Mm. Uh, how uh, should we do about uh, <laughs> such kind do? of problems? Mm, well, let's see. Uh, there are several approaches to this. Yeah. Um, uh, one would be to simply make the, the quickest vaccine to this situation, the, the quickest antidote to this uh, misleading about Japanese news, is to uh, 
make Japanese news more interesting uh, for the Western for example? Well, let's see. Uh, if there was much, if there was a lot more yeah. uh, volume of of English news coming out of Japan, and it was reported, you know, with, with good journalism. Uh, then I think, uh, for instance, a lot of news about Fukushima can become a human interest kind of news. Right now, only the disaster aspects uh, are oh. being reported. <clears throat> but, you know, in Japan, we're, we're hearing a lot about how people are going back to Fukushima and how people are coming down, they're coming out of panic, and uh, some people are actively buying uh, produce from Fukushima to help its recovery. And um, some people uh, are going back to farming, and maybe uh, human interest stories, we, uh, but they have to be interesting stories. You know, they can't just be flat reporting that some farmers are going back and that, that more Fukushima produce is being sold. Uh, you know, uh, the kind of energy that they put into other, other human interest stories. If, if the Japanese news became more interested in gripping, I think uh, foreign news sources or, or search engines would, would, would <coughs> find them more favorable. Mm. And uh, we are uh, now, uh, uh, I am now uh, and, uh, doing uh, with other, another program, um, yes. the uh, sort of uh, sex rape. Oh yeah, the uh, sex rape uh, issue. And it's a very uh, big scandal in the <coughs> foreign countries. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> in Japan, uh, the problem is settling, but uh, for example, New York Times mm -hmm. or uh, The Economist, uh, such kind of uh, high quality uh, media uh, don't understand the mm -hmm. uh, program, uh, but uh, um, makes a very scandalous news. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, uh, the same bias uh, is going on about uh, with uh, Fukushima mm -hmm. and uh, as I said, uh, the the exaggeration uh, is proportional to uh, to uh, the and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. to the distance yes. from Fukushima or Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, as you said, uh, media can be uh, irresponsible about yes. such kind of uh, the problem. Um, they are not uh, concerned uh, directly. So uh, we uh, we should our <coughs> um, um, program uh, or the reporting more interesting, mm -hmm. uh, as you said. Right. Right. Uh, what? Uh, how uh, should we do uh, okay. uh, to make uh, Japan uh, interesting? Okay. Yes. Well, um, after having proposed. Th that that yeah. idea. I, I, I'm already seeing how this would have to be a long-term solution. Yeah. So in the immediate short run, there are other things that can also be done. Well, for one, uh, the Japanese government tends to be very quiet about its statements. Yeah. It makes official statements, and then uh, there's no what I would call exposition, explanation. Um, I think uh, other Western governments tend to make their their country more appealing and attractive to the world. Uh, some some people sometimes use the word sexy, like uh, people try to make the UK look s sexy in the news, especially the BBC itself. The BBC is a very sexy kind of media, and so so when you look at it, there's all kinds of the, the layout, the design, uh, the special interest programs. Uh, they're really out there to grab your attention, and they know that the more uh, people pay attention to the BBC, mm -hmm. the more the UK as a country brand matters. So, but, so if you look at it more from a distance, you know, UK, it's, it's a small island country. It used to have an empire, but it no longer has an empire. It has the same economic problems that the EU does. Uh, you know, some far right uh, uh, political parties like UKIP are, are winning seats. So, you know, UK is just another dismal country. It's, it's boring. <laughs> But because of the yeah. BBC, everybody's oh, always excited. Oh, like, what's going on in England? Yeah, yeah. You know, who won the football game? I don't care about soccer yeah. and football, but, but so many people do. But that's because yeah. the BBC and the UK government together are yeah. collaborating as well as oh. UK business. Everybody's in it together. I would call it a conspiracy. 
So we have to conspire in Japan yeah. with with the industries, you know, yeah. with companies, corporations, uh, the media, and the Japanese government has to actively intervene here. Yeah. And and to I wouldn't go as far as propaganda because propaganda involves like Russia today, you know, <laughs> inserting little goodies which are not necessarily true. Yeah. But but within. Uh, yeah. Respectable journalism within the yeah. limits of, of respectable journalism. I think that uh, the Japanese government, uh, corporations, uh, the media, and and the Japanese at large can now sort of turn on their 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 engine and yeah. start thinking about how to make Japan uh, appear more sexy yeah. to the world. So we're really talking about brand marketing Japan. Oh, that's the kind of mentality. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, so-called soft power of the mm -hmm. Joseph Nye, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, as you said, uh, the uh, Britain uh, is uh, really a, a small country, but. Uh, they have great soft power of the British Empire. Yes, yes, they do. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was working uh, um, in NHK, mm -hmm. a, a broadcasting station, right. uh, uh, such as the Japanese BBC. But NHK is very, very <laughs> no, uh, no, no, bad. No, no, no. Very, very uh, different uh, culture. Japanese, uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, bureaucratic. Japanese, <laughs> it's uh, uh, make, making sexy, mm -hmm, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Japanese government, uh, on the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, increasing uh, their budget uh, oh, oh. for uh, the public and uh, foreign uh, publicity. Right. But uh, their presence is very, very small uh, compared to BBC. Yes. So let me give you an example. I yeah. actually sometimes work for hire at NHK yeah. on their NHK world programs yeah. and I've actually done a couple of debate programs okay yeah. east asian issues and when NHK does a foreign uh, an english language uh, broadcast where we talk about the friction between china and japan or or korea and japan yeah. it gets all really nice and nobody's nobody has a everybody's smiling and it's all about friendship <laughs> and why can't we be friends and they really work around the hard the hard issues. It's it's not like BBC Hard Talk where people start getting almost angry. But you know, with, with BBC Hard Talk or with BBC uh, debate programs, you know, they they go right into to the hit that they, the nail on the, they hammer the nail on the head. And they would you know, for instance, they would interview Gaddafi or or, or any person which is you know considered hostile. <laughs> and if for NHK to do the same thing, they would have to be interviewing Kim Jong Un. Like on Skype or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. So and, and, you know, you know, Your Excellency, why is it that the DPRK cannot do this? You know, why are you conducting a nuclear test? And then you know, His Excellency Kim Jong Un yeah, yeah. would say something crazy, and then and, and then I would be there, like almost not trying to laugh, you know, like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that would be the kind of thing NHK should do if it wants to be the BBC. Oh. So the question is, will NHK have the guts to do that? Because. You know, uh, if the NHK really stepped into the issue of, say, China's democracy, yeah. like the Hong Kong protests, and it started like <clears throat> questioning Communist Party officials, what 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 the what the Chinese uh, government usually does, it did it with BBC, is they will threaten to expel you from their country. <laughs> They're saying, okay, NHK, no more NHK in China. Sorry, go home. Yeah. And then that's their bargain. They will bully you, but then you have to sort of negotiate back. And then BBC, uh, you know, tried to do Tibet and the Uyghur Xinjiang uh, autonomous zone during the uh, Beijing Olympics because they had some unrest there. So, and so when it cut into the Tibet issue, mm -hmm. uh, right during the Olympics, uh, I think the Chinese government really bullied the BBC. And as a result, the BBC became quiet. So you see, but but it was never expelled, you know. So now they're reporting again on the Hong Kong uh, oh. demonstrations. So what I'm saying is that the BBC has clout. So even if it's sort of pushed back, it will try to find a way to come back in because it, that's part of the the UK government's long-term strategy. So when we compare that with the Japanese oh. uh, government, I would I would sadly say that the Japanese government right now lacks. They do not have a long-term foreign policy strategy. And they don't uh, consider NHK to be like sort of a tool of that projection of power, yeah. which it should be. So, so maybe that's the difference in mindset between the, the English government, the UK government, and the Japanese government. 
And uh, apart from Fukushima, in general, mm -hmm. uh, do you, uh, how do you have an uh, impression about uh, the Japanese image? Is how they started? Uh, for you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you don't. Uh, do you have uh, other example of the started image of Japan? Okay, yes, there are many. Actually, there are many. <laughs> there are too many for this one hour. So I'm just going to go into one other thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, with uh, anime and manga and also games because you know a lot of the characters and games are based on the anime culture computer graphics uh, which come out of Japan um, uh, there's there is right now a, a, a wide gap that's opening up I would even call it a chasm a very wide gap between what people in Western countries would consider to be okay decent and what Japanese game users and manga fans think is is normal and okay and that is precisely uh, the erotic or sexual descriptions of minors under under 20 people yeah so uh, in, in Japan um, even real-life idol singers you know in their dances sometimes you see a little bit of their skirt you know picking up in the wind a little bit in Japanese, they call it chiramise, and I, there's no word for that in English, so I can't really uh, translate that. It, it's, it's, it's kind of this voyeuristic, ooh, like, you know, like ooh, her skirt went up. Yeah. This, this sort of peeping kind of culture. Uh, this is endemic to anime. It's been around for 30 or 40 years. So in Japanese anime, it's, it's okay to describe uh, this kind of sort of semi-sexual, a little erotic uh, uh, description of of people who are characters who are considered to be under 20, okay? But in England, they just convicted somebody for possessing this anime material uh, for, with something close to a child pornography sentence. A judge. <laughs> yeah, no, really, really, it just happened. It, it's breaking. Uh, uh, could you uh, uh, show some example? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let me. I, uh, I tweeted it, uh, so let me. Uh, we, this is breaking in Japanese. Yeah. And it's making reference to. Uh, uh, article that just appeared in the Gazette. Yeah. And so and we can actually see Middle Middlesbrough man creates legal history after being convicted of possessing illegal images of cartoon children. So illegal. basically illegal. Okay, let's go to the let's, <laughs> let's go to the English source. Uh, this Japanese article is simply relaying the, the article on the Gazette. And believe it or not, <laughs> this is impossible to okay, this poor gentleman uh, has been convicted. Uh, oh. Mr. Ha Robo Hawk has been convicted of something close to a child pornography offense for having Japanese anime images in his in his in his hard drive. Okay, let's read the article. And and you know, maybe for <laughs> viewers of this program, this is the first time they've heard about this. So hey, this is getting closer to you. You know, this is not Japan anymore. This yeah. is gonna hit you. <laughs> okay, a job now this is crazy too. Th th this article, you know, I know it's spiced up because look, the first wording is a jobless animation fan has been I just said something funny in Japanese, but anyway, a jobless animation fan has made legal history as he was convicted of having illegal pictures of cartoon children. Cartoon children. Robo Hawk, 39 years old, a jobless man, is believed to be the first in the UK, first in the UK called before court over his collection of Japanese manga or anime style images alone, okay? Oh. No, no photos, not reality, but anime style images. He admitted 10 counts of possessing prohibited images of children at, at the Teesside uh, Crown Court. His barrister, Richard Bennett, said, these are not what would be termed as pedophilic images. These are cartoons. Of course they're cartoons. <laughs> and Mr. Bennett revealed that such banned images were freely available on legitimate sites. Right, you, three clicks away, you will see these images. He said this case should serve as a warning to every manga and anime fan to be careful. <laughs> be careful. It seems there are many thousands of people in this country, if they are less than careful, who may find themselves in that position too. Police found the images when they seized. Hawk's computer from his home on June 13, uh, 2012, said prosecutor Harry Hadfield. He said officers found 288 still and 99 moving <laughs> images, but none were of real people. None were of real people, okay? 
they are classified as prohibited images. Now, what is this? Prohibited images. Kinshi gazo in Japanese. That's amazing. <laughs> prohibited images as they depicted young girls, some in school uniforms, okay, underage. JK. In Japanese, the word JK uh, is Joshi Kosei, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Joshi Kosei, JK in Japanese, anime fan language. Parlance is, means a school girl uniforms, JK. If there's one thing you want to remember from this program, JK. Okay. Uh, some exposing themselves, yes, that happens, or taking part in sexual activity, yes, this does happen. He added, the expert was able to see that the defendant had been actively searching for this material. <laughs> right, he was an anime fan. He, that's all he does all day because he's jobless, remember? Uh, Hulk of Hardwick Road, South Bank Middlesbrough, had denied 20 charges of possessing prohibited images of children and was due to stand trial this week. But he pleaded guilty to 10 specimen charges. The other 10 were left to lie on the court file. He denied a separate charge of failing to notify police of a string of online usernames, but he was cleared of this as prosecutors offered no evidence. Six years ago, he was prosecuted for having Tomb Raider-style computer-generated pictures of fictional children. They were so realistic, a jury convicted him. Uh, a jury convicted him on six counts of making indecent pseudo-photographs of children. Pseudo, giji shashi. Pseudo-photographs of children, which he had denied. That, too, was the first case of its kind in the country. Yeah, of course, a judge told him he crossed the line as to what is illegal. And those pictures could be a door into a very murky and distasteful world. He was given a community order, uh, community service punishment, I suppose, order and completed a sex offender treatment. Sex offender treatment program. He had to go through a program. After the 2008 conviction, the former student and office worker had hundreds of manga Japanese style pictures at that time, but they were not made illegal until 2010. After 2010, I guess they, they made it illegal in, in England. Okay? <laughs> Mr. Bennett said on two occasions now he's been a test case. This is a test case because he's the only person, as far as I'm aware, who has appeared for possession singly of these sort of images. Uh, he said Hawk helped many people in the Middlesbrough community and many spoke for him. So he's a nice guy, you know, everybody likes him in real life. <laughs> oh my. So, okay. So the defendants, the defense was saying that this was all legally obtained from legal websites. So it's, it's freely oh, yeah. on, on the mm -hmm. web. You know, he mm -hmm. didn't go through some special, you know, Russian domain or something with a credit, with a fake credit <laughs> card or something. Uh, these were legally obtained. And uh, in Japan, you can, you can see them on an iPhone. It's, it's just there for you. So, uh, but the judge did not agree. He said, these are clearly all images designed to make people think. Omo, they are of children. Kodomo da to omoaseru image da. They are fictitious, tashkani fiction da ga, in the sense that in no part of them does any real person appear. It is important to emphasize that there were no actual children or perpetrators involved. Higaisha mo, kagaisha mo, jitsuzai wa shite nai koto wa tokushitsu su beki da. I have to tell you that if there had been an immediate prison, prison sentence measured in years, it might have been appropriate. Uh, this is what the judge is saying. You are an intelligent man. You certainly should have been aware of the risk of indulging and in accessing this material, and you acknowledge your foolishness and guilt. He added, this is material that clearly society, public, can well do without. Its danger is that it obviously portrays sexual activity with children, and the more it's portrayed, the more the ill-disposed may think it's acceptable. See, this is the interpretation in England. It's that even though it doesn't exist, if it makes it attractive for you, uh, people with that tendency will cross the line and actually engage in real activity, sex with children. Is it special to England? Uh, I'm not sure if it's special to England. Maybe some other countries in the EU or maybe some states in America have a stricter guideline. I, 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 have a, I, I haven't researched it, but my guess would be that, that it's, it's not really like one particular rule, blanket rule. Hmm. And is there any other example of well, this see, uh, Well, this is a really uh, extreme case. Yeah. Um, uh, Let's see. Well, yeah, there's occasional. Uh, let's see. Uh, in general, uh, yeah. how how do you think uh, the Japanese image is distorted? Uh. Well, um, for one, uh, 
there really isn't interesting news coming out of Japan. Its economic growth has slowed down. Yeah. Its population is too old. And, you know, and, then, and then there's, the, what, 30,000 people who commit suicide every year. Yeah. And then there's a real big, almost outbreak of depression, utsubyo, in, in Japan. So everything is kind of down and cloudy from Japan. So anything that's, like, on fire is, is what the, the world media picks up. And actually, uh, okay, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk about uh, how this has become illegal in England as of now, right? But then last month in September, uh, related to this, okay, okay, so we've just got that conviction coming in from the UK, uh, but, but last month in September, uh, this is from, uh, let's see, this is from the Mirror, uh, sort of a British tabloid, uh, the, head, the, the headliner runs, Sony sparks controversy with new PlayStation game taking users inside schoolgirls' bedroom. <laughs> okay? This is another example of how Japan is actively, uh, how, how should I say, Japan is promoting a strange image of itself. This is Sony doing this, okay? And uh, <laughs> the Japanese company were showing off their new virtual reality headset at a press conference when footage uh, from upcoming game summer lesson was revealed. And so anyway, this is their new headset where you can see 360 degrees around in a virtual world and by nodding, it becomes a yes. It's like clicking yes. And if you, if you shake sideways, it becomes no. So that is a logical uh, thing. It lets you navigate into the game. But also, the avatars within the game uh, can sense that you're getting close to them. So the interaction, and uh, beneath the article actually, uh, actually, okay, this is the capture. See, this is, this is what the, the Sony and Bandai uh, Namco uh, promoted in their game show images, like, s see what you can do. But, but this is a, this, these are a couple of captures off of their, of their video where somebody is obviously looking up the chest of the schoolgirl, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's, a, there's a moving image right here. Okay, so this was under hash weird world. So this was really uh, what would be called in Japanese omoshiro item, which is sort of just like weird news. So this was, you know, more more in a, in a, in a joking spirit. Okay, let's look at it. It's only 36 seconds, so let's, let's see this. It, it'll give you a picture of how Japan ends up uh, misrepresenting itself, or maybe this is the way Japan wants to represent itself. <laughs> okay, we're getting this. Okay, the Daily Mirror. So this is a sort of a, a screen capture from the actual game. This is what you see through the visor. And Sony is proudly presenting this as a new product. It's a whole new paradigm. But the thing is, OK, look, see, see how, you, how when you get close to the girl, the girl gets, gets shy. <laughs> oh my god. Summer lesson. Oh. You see, so, so and, and I, I wrote about this in the Japanese Twitter, and I tried to explain in Japanese to game fans why this is going to cause a problem with the Western world, that you're not going to get the reaction you're hoping for. You're probably going to get a negative reaction <laughs> because Sony with PlayStation, yeah. you know, it's a flagship company yeah. in the game world. Um, and it is actively promoting yeah. this, and, and this would be considered offensive on so many levels, right? In the child yeah. pornography, but also the whole view of men looking at women as sort of sexualized objects. It's, yeah. you know, it's against feminism. And I wrote yeah, about that yeah, yeah. And, and Japanese. And if you look at here, I wrote about this. This is my Japanese tweets about this. Uh, and I was showing, you know, news sources and I, I'm analyzing it and I'm writing a lot about it, but then what happened is, if you look at the comments, uh, and this was viewed, I think, 112,000 views, okay? So that, it's, it's generated a lot of interest. My commentary on how this is going to cause a problem. And look, now let's go to the comments. We have 109,895, okay? So we look at all this, and in Japanese, uh, people are enraged at me and America, they say, they're basically saying, stay out of our world. We don't need your morals, you know. And also the argument is that these are not real people. And, and you know, usually all the stuff that, that's talked about uh, defending anime against censorship. But what, was cur what I found curious was that this was last month, September. So uh, very few people sympathized uh, with, with the kind of standard Western view mm. of, they, they just simply could not understand, mm. even after I explained 
why it would maybe maybe Sony should not promote this as their main yeah. thing. This would be okay as an adult oriented game, you know, yeah. because such games exist in the Western world too. Mm -hmm. And and even a Grand Theft Auto, which is a best selling uh, Western game, uh, has a lot of pornographic scenes. So that's not the problem here. The problem is that this, be you know, they're they're demonstrating their new flagship technology, mm -hmm. and the first thing that they show is like, oh, you can look up the skirt of, of underage girls too, you know, that's cool. And so, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, returning to the uh, sex thread problem, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, the lesson uh, is common. Uh, the, uh, for uh, the sexual uh, mm. problem or mm. uh, the problem with uh, women, uh, Japanese people's the standard uh, is different from mm. Uh, mm. Western people. Mm. So we should be careful about such kind of problem. Yes, I think that. Um, when you start going into wartime atrocities in general, yeah. this this is between any two countries, even like something like <clears throat> Cambodia with the Pol Pot. Yeah. Uh, people involved, the parties that were involved in the conflict, usually either don't talk about it, like with the Pol Pot, nobody's talking, or if they talk about it, it's one-sided. And usually, when 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 the when people say, "Oh, I was a victim of this," or "I participated in this," you know, right now with the sex slave problem, uh, people are too old now, so they're all dying. But but even with something as recent as the the Pol Pot massacre, uh, people usually just don't want to tell the whole truth. And when they do talk, they're doing it for some form of agenda. So it becomes very hard to get a picture of what took place during wartime. Okay, so that that happens anywhere. Right, right now in the Ukraine with Russian side and the Ukrainian side giving conflicting accounts, or even in Syria and Iraq with the, with the Islamic State, you know, some people who are embedded with the Islamic State actually come out saying, no, no, they're nice guys, you know. So, so people are saying really opposing things in, in any kind of situation. That's square one. So the next uh, place we have to go from there is that, therefore, um, uh, the reporting uh, tends to become very sensitive so any new item of data or any new fact or, or, or things that could be a fact uh, become very heavy. And with the comfort women sex slave issue yeah. between Korea and Japan, uh, there was a, a whole dramatic twist of events you know, over the last 20 to 30 years. But only people in Japan who are literate with Japanese media history know about the details. So in the end, when it becomes big, bold letters in the New York Times, uh, it becomes abbreviated to the Japanese government yeah. trying to deny their war guilt. And that's yeah. not the issue on the Japanese side. You know, yeah. we're, we're, right now, the, 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 the people at the top of the CEO of Asahi is making a public apology. Uh, they, they're having a, what, a third person uh, sort of uh, fact finding committee or Dai Sansha Kensho Inka, you know, like this, this <laughs> committee of people who are supposed to, to advise yeah. Asahi and how it should be more truthful with its reporting. But they're only picking their friends to be in that, in that committee. So that's already distorted. But on the Japanese side, on, on the web, we see this all the time. But none of that is going outside. Yeah. And, and, and so that's one problem. And then another problem is, as usual, people, journalists from the outside world, are reading English news broadcasted by Asahi. Yeah. While Asahi is now doing their own little problem in Japan. So, so this is really several degrees removed from, yeah. the, from what's going on. Yeah. Um, the common problem um, for Fukushima or the sex rape or the child pornography uh, is that uh, 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 in your expression and the, the abbreviation yes, yes. of the, the information? Uh, Jap Japanese people are aware of the full detail of yes. the problem, but uh, the Western people are very, very. Uh, short story, very abbreviated story. Yes, yes, yes. That's a very uh, in, uh, important problem. So, uh, to make a comparison here, um, let's think of the 1980s or 1990s of a Western world with no Al Jazeera. Okay, back then there was a lot of uh, reporting in the 80s and 90s about Islamic terrorism. And for instance, in uh, Lebanon, in Beirut, there was a, a militant group called the Hezbollah, which is a Shiite Muslim militant group, which is considered to be sponsored by the Iranian government. And uh, the Hezbollah uh, conducted uh, one of the first spectacular suicide bombs against uh, United States Marines barracks in Beirut. And many Marines died from this. So, and this was 
was a shock to many Americans because yeah. they thought, oh, but we were sending our peacekeeping Marine troops into Lebanon to help them resolve their conflict, and why are we being attacked? You know, so it became this huge uproar. Uh, this was before 2011. And back then, only uh, American news sources were reporting on this, or, or the BBC. So the view of Muslims, of, of Islam, was that Islam is a frightening religion in which be people become suicide bombers. But then after Al Jazeera came out, they started offering you know, a different kind of perspective. So it, uh, Al Jazeera didn't make Osama bin Laden look good or anything. It's not like they're apologizing for Hezbollah or, or Al Qaeda or Hamas. But at least they give perspective on why people send money to Al Qaeda. Or even with the Islamic State right now, a lot of the money that they're getting, the funding that they're getting, comes from Gulf countries, including including Saudi Arabia and Qatar. So why is it that rich, rich Arabs or, or the, the, the common person in, in Islamic countries, some of them end up supporting these militant groups? You know, now we have an understanding. And uh, without Al Jazeera, uh, people just thought the Muslims are frightening. And right now with Japan, Maybe it's a similar situation. Yeah. We need some kind of Al Jazeera, Al -Jazeera about Japan. <laughs> from Japan. Yeah, that's our conclusion. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or maybe like Russia today. Maybe we can have JT, like Japan yeah. today. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.